Imagine if you could just go to any woman on the street, make your move, and end up successful. I bet you have been in this situation where you have walked along the street, saw a pretty girl walk past, and instantly thought to yourself, Damn, I wish I said hello. It's like an instant regret. We have all been there at least once in our lives, right? But did you know this is becoming more and more common? It's not easy making your move and potentially getting slapped in the face with rejection. For my brothers who are in the Western world and not in Asia, this challenge is 1,000 times harder. The reality is, both in Asia and in the Western world, there are many reasons why men are choosing not to approach women. And to be honest, we could talk about this until the cows come home. But today, I want to help my dudes who are living in Asia and wish to find that girl of their dreams. But before I tell you what I found very effective and what will change your dating game, I must strongly recommend one big action. This action is to delete your dating apps. This is the only requirement I suggest, but I know I will lose some of you by saying this. Why? Well, because if you delete your apps, there will be a void. Spending hours a day speaking to women that never lead to anything is wasteful. But it does fill the void. If you are single, speaking to a girl for a few hours helps pass the time, right? So why do I suggest deleting them? The game is rigged. Even in Asia, the return on your time invested is not good. Okay, so you spend 12 hours on the apps and you get a lot of matches, maybe even 100. I'm not saying you won't, but then 10 out of the 100 say they will meet you and then only one will actually meet. It's not a good investment of time. But this is not all. When you delete the apps, you are driven to approach women as you have made a commitment to yourself that you will not use apps or Instagram or anything. Instead, you will be a highly valued man who is not afraid to make his move. I'll be honest with you. I was a big idiot. I spent years using and paying for dating apps. Why on earth would I talk to a woman in the street when I could just go on the apps and not face rejection? This was my logic. I fell into the trap of convenience. So yes, you will face the void and you will be speaking to a lot fewer ladies. But I promise you after a few weeks, the energy you spend on the apps can be redirected to meeting women in your everyday life. And believe me, there will be a big difference in your overall results when the only option you have is to chat in real life. Now that we have that recommendation out of the way, let's cover some techniques and situations. First, we need to cover the environment. I'm a great believer that most environments are a great opportunity, but timing can play a big part. For example, if you are walking across the business park, you will find possibilities to meet some ladies at around 1 or 2 o'clock. But the same ladies will not be in the right mindset to chat around 8 or 9 in the morning. It's common sense, right? Let's face it. A lot of professionals work six days a week, so from experience I've found they are more open, positive, and bubblier after work. Now, I'm not suggesting you wait at the business park, like a crocodile that waits for the zebra to cross the river, but it's an example that highlights how important the timing of the environment plays into your success, which often doesn't get spoken about. Nevertheless, through trial and error, I have found this a significant factor in Southeast Asia. Another aspect to consider is the shyness of the lady. A friend of mine is not scared to approach a big group of women. He does this and often walks away with at least one number. He does this again, but this time with one lady on her own, and he fails miserably. We were talking about this recently, and as he is a good-looking dude, it didn't make sense. Why would he be successful with a big group but fail when he approaches just one woman on her own? During the talk, we discovered that his confidence led him to approach women even in busy public places. The ladies he approached were often on a busy train. Yeah, I know, right? 
balls of steel, but anyways, some ladies in Asia are really shy, so you must remember the setting can impact your results. Now moving on to a difficult pain point, and that is English. Always keep at the back of your mind that the ladies you will be speaking to are not native English speakers. Unless you are in the Philippines or Singapore, you won't be 100% sure if she can speak English or not. This is why local language is a bonus. For instance, in Thailand, I would say hello and ask a simple question such as, How are you? This would be in her local language. I will then ask her if she speaks English. 99% of the time she will say yes or a little. Then the rest of the conversation will be in English. But even if you are dating in Japan, the Philippines, Vietnam, or wherever, it's still best to remember that English is not their native language and thus keep the conversation slow, simple, and friendly. If you are feeling a little shy, there will be a tendency to speak quickly, but this can lead to the famous lost in translation scenario. Some guys like to ask for help or something simple to break the ice. This can also work well as many ladies enjoy helping foreigners, and thus it's a great way to start a conversation. During my interviews with women across Asia, I found that simple conversations work best. One of the ladies mentioned that it's best if the guy talks about something she is interested in. Now bear in mind here that the lady is very beautiful and high class. In other words, she gets a lot of attention. Nevertheless, she continued and said that a lot of guys will talk about the gym, work, or something, and to me that is boring, but a nice compliment on my dress or my hair would make it easier for me to talk to him. Naturally, when she told me this, I jokingly said to her, it sounds like you just want a guy to talk about how pretty you are. But in reality, it's about making the situation as easy as possible, and it's hard to think on your feet if you are a non-native speaker. By now, most of you will know that I've not covered the basic stuff like smelling good, looking good, being happy, smiling, and so on because you know that already. It's best for you if I tell you the areas that are less well known so you can actually learn some valuable insight. And so, with this in mind, through my careful reflection and on seeing other experiences, one big reason why men struggle when they try to find a woman outside of dating apps is that their net is not cast far. Let me tell you a secret. I host small events. I was speaking to a dude who recently joined. He told me he didn't want to date anyone from the event or put himself on an app because he is a private person. I said, that's cool, man. Fair enough. He then told me he works a lot and goes to the gym in his spare time. Again, I said fair enough, but he then says he wanted to find a girl to date, so I then asked him how that was possible. His lifestyle doesn't make it possible. It doesn't matter if it's an evening walk around the park, signing up for a local event, or volunteering. You must be willing to put yourself in situations where you can meet a lot of high-quality ladies. All right, bro, I said enough. Consider being a pal of mine and click the like button because it helps my video reach more people or check out this next video.